colors that I see on this rose and I'm ready to now start to lay in color. Um, and when I say I pre-mixed all the colors is when I, I laid out all of my colors from the tubes onto my palette and then looked at the flower in the lights, in the darks, in the half tones, and tried to mix every single color that I saw there. And while I was doing it, I was holding up my palette knife to check. So I would put the paint on my palette knife, and I'll show you a little example here. Put the paint on the tip of my palette knife, like this and then hold it up and try and match a certain area. So by doing this, it sort of gave me a guide. It's not a perfect color mixing strategy, but what I did was I ended up mixing 12 different colors for the greens around the flower, and I mixed maybe 20 different colors for the petals in the light, and maybe 20 different colors for the petals in the shadows and then everywhere in between so basically I have a palette that's full of every single color that I think I might use and that's just a way to get yourself started um, you know as I go I might start to discover that I didn't mix a certain color or I you know was a little bit off with some of my previous choices so you would just want to give yourself a nice variety now I'm gonna start by laying in what I think constitutes some of my shadow, which isn't very dark because I'm working with natural lights and a very white flower, pinkish white flower. And what's nice about the raw umber is that it's dry. You don't have to wait very long before you put this on. It, I mean, it's just really a matter of the time that it took me to mix my colors. And um, I don't know if that was 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. I'm also using um, another uh, bright, in this case, an Ebony Splendor Creative Mark Number 4. Um, I just bought these brushes. Um, so I'm grabbing all the new ones. I have a, a whole bunch of older brushes, but I tend to gravitate towards um, new ones, no matter what their shape, if they're a filbert or a bright, it's just easier to lay down color with a nice shaped brush. One thing that's important is to make sure that you're getting a full range of values on your flower because if you don't go dark enough or if you don't go light enough, you're not going to get as much form out of these petals. So um, what I'm looking at right now is I'm gonna lay in what I think are sort of my darkest darks. Near the center. And that one looks a little bit brighter. It looks a little bit higher chroma than I think it should be, so just change it a little bit. I'm looking at um, working within the space that I created with my initial drawing, but if I see some issues, I move the shapes. So you just kind of adjust as you go. I see a little bit more of a violet up in here which it didn't mix very much of, but yeah, I think that's a little bit more accurate. Again, I like starting from the middle too, because it is the most complicated part. And the most delicate part. And it changes pretty quickly too, so I'm noticing that some of these shapes are going to shift a little bit, and I'm just changing them, changing them as I see them. Yep, so this opened up. There's definitely, you want to maintain a glow 
from the inside of your flower. And the way to do this is to make sure that there is enough chroma in there. Um, in other words, look for also more of a hue. So I'm noticing sort of a, a more of an orangey hue and less grayed out colors in here. Ooh, that really moved. <laughs> this connects to this, okay. Yep, so this is what happens. I had gone inside for about an hour to upload the first part of the video to my computer so I could free up space on my phone and um, get it out to Patreon. And in that time, it really opened up. It's very hot out. I think that has a lot to do with it. But yes, I'm definitely looking for the chroma. I'm looking for opportunities where I am um, you know, deep dark in, in those crevices to really make them uh, more saturated with either a orange, pink, or yellow glow. You want to make sure that you can use those opportunities to give this flower life, right? If we use too many grays, it could look a little bit dead. And we don't want to do that. So I'm kind of moving around a little bit, exploring the colors. I'm liking the colors that I mixed. Um, they seem to be going on here quite well. Um, but before I get too far into that, I'd like to switch brushes now and put in my lightest lights. So my lightest lights, I'm going to use my um, my pure white to gauge, which some of the lightest lights on here have a hint of pink. So there is that. But this is the end of my value scale and what I like to do is see the lightest light next to the darkest dark on my painting and compare to what's actually happening up there and that helps me to judge if I'm going dark enough um, or if I have to go darker because I on my palette as I mixed those shadow colors I saw how they weren't going very dark right because the inside of this flower isn't very dark it's very illuminated and the leaves around it are what's very dark but um, I can't go any lighter than the purest white. So by putting this on the canvas pretty quickly, knowing this is the gauge of my lightest light, that will help to tell me if my value scale should be adjusted on the darker end. I'm actually using um, flake white instead of titanium white, so it's a little bit transparent. I go back and forth between using the titanium white and the flake white. Um, when I'm recommending colors to you guys, I recommend titanium white often because it's um, more affordable. This tube of flake white that I'm using is from Vasari and it's $120. So, you can't mess around too much. This is such a beautiful flower. It's got so many nice colors in there. Let me see here. So, I'm pretty happy with the value relationships and one of the main things I'm noticing is sort of in this area here, it's a little more blue and purple. So I'm going to acknowledge that. I'm going to start to put that in because it's very central. And then again, like I was saying, I like to work the center of the flower kind of out from there. Just 
make sure everything fits. I'm not using a lot of paint either because these are tiny shapes and if you use too much paint in the beginning it becomes harder and harder so what I do is kind of build up the paint a little bit but mostly towards the end right so I'm, I'm really trying to hold off what I'm gonna do is just focus on this one bent petal and try and get it looking exactly like what I see up there and I feel like that's a nice way to ground myself and then work sort of off of it. It's a nice big area that can help me to see a placement on here so I don't get lost. It also has some of my lightest lights and it comes close to some dark darks so it's a good place to work. Using a tinier brush, this is a size zero. Now, with the flake white, I end up having to build it up a little bit thicker than the titanium to get it to its lightest light. So I think that's what you guys are starting to see here. I think um, it's kind of a downfall of working with it because titanium at least can get you to your ultimate value. You know, it's opaque, it's not transparent, so it gets you there quicker. This takes a little bit more effort. I think when you start to build up the paint, it also gives it a little bit more character, so it's kind of nice. Um, I also choose my brush sizes to help aid, you know, the brush strokes that I'm going so if I'm working in an area that's really tiny, I'm thinking about, well, if I have to choose a new brush, what size would help me just do one or two strokes and make that shape? You know? and I think that's really important to think about these colors as every single different color has a shape. So, and so if you think about it like that and you think about them like brush strokes, that can become pretty helpful. Sometimes, sometimes when I'm working on an area, I feel like it's kind of there, but not quite there. And the reason why it's not quite there is because what's around it isn't working yet. Um, so that's very interesting. And so right now, in order to make this part work, I'm now going to work around it a lot more to see if I fill in those, what is actually lacking.
Now in this flower, there's a tiny part that goes very dark. We can see down into the center of the flower. And you wanna be very careful when you're making it darker to also keep the chroma. So I'm looking at an opportunity to keep it orange, but keeping the chroma up. Test this color. It's a little bit too red. We need more yellow. Yellow lightens it though. So we want to make sure. Okay, maybe a little bit of burnt umber since that leans a little bit towards red and but also towards orange. There we go. It's helping to give a little bit more contrast. Now, get some of that yellow glow. to change some of this. Yes, I have to lay in another petal. This connects with this guy. Hopefully with one stroke here. I can lay in that missing petal that moved. And then this one that was up higher is now lower. There's some really light lights over here. So I'm gonna lay those in. All right, so this shadow now, this guy is more here. And then the shadow. high chroma. You can always knock high chroma down. So let's make these shapes work. There. Okay. It joins up with more pink. Lizard than uh, cad red. This is more purpley. That needs to be more purpley. Again, I'm easing off of the 
you know, going too low chroma, if, you know, it's a little bit more pink or more yellow looking on my painting, that's not a bad thing. And the reason is because you can easily make something grayed out. It just takes literally like one brush stroke or a little bit of blending and it instantly becomes low chroma. So I'm really looking at like stair stepping into that. That's not to say that I'm not trying to match the colors exactly. I am, but if I'm not matching the colors exactly, I will err on the side of higher chroma just to be safe. I have to go in kind of thick to make him light enough there. Again, I think it's easier to work with titanium white to get your lightest lights. So if you're beginning, I recommend the titanium. Still gives you very similar almost exactly the same colors. It gives you the exact same colors. You can mix anything. It's just about the transparency. Which is something I've been playing with lately and that's like more of an advanced thing. So. You could have both on your palette, I suppose, but what you're supposed to do, so this is what I would do, maybe start with the lead white, let it dry, and then go back with the titanium white if I needed to kick anything up, and if the lead white wasn't doing it. But really, if you go back and kick up, you know, after it's dry and you use lead white on top of it, it'll get lighter still. It's just a matter of being more opaque. Again, fixing the shapes as you go. There, that one kind of stayed the same. So on these petals, I'm sharpening the edge that's closest to us and sticking out the furthest and trying to soften the edge that goes back um, to give the illusion of depth. It's kind of tricky and I'll probably go back and try and reinstate that later too. It helps to give a sense of depth.
This takes a long time, so you just have to be patient. Squinting helps too. It's getting hot. It's a little bit confusing what's happening in there, so I'm going to kind of work piece by piece. So now, next to that shadow, it gets a little bit lighter, so I'll do that instead of jumping around too much. So next to this shadow. opened up. It's too blue, but I'm trying to avoid going too gray too quickly, so I can change that if I need to. Okay, so I'm back. I had to take a little break there because my iPhone overheated uh, for some reason. <laughs> so hopefully that won't continue. Um, so let's take a look here. Try and work out of this middle. pretty hot out. I'm sitting in a garage and uh, there's not much airflow because I had to shut the, um, I'm using a side door and had to shut the real garage door to control the light, um, make sure it was only north light. It's a different garage than the other impromptu studio setup that I had shown you guys. That's okay. One thing to make sure when you're painting flowers to make sure that you are getting the hue
Another hard thing about these is that the hue changes so much. So you have to make sure that you use different brushes when you change your hues. So for example, right now I'm working on more of the pink hues and um, I'm avoiding any of the more blue ones and I'll use a different brush for that. I'm sort of using the, the pink and purpley hues together on this brush. But I really, I think it's important to have control because you can easily get out of control with with your brushes. Now it should be lighter. brushes do get a little bit mixed up though. It's uh, smart to keep your lightest light brush definitely your lightest light, although um, it does end up getting a little bit muddy because it's touching other colors up there. So oftentimes I'll have my lightest light brush and then I'll put it away and or it'll turn into like a half tone brush or something instead. Um, so before I was saying that squinting really helps because a lot of these values end up fading into one another or being very close to each other. And when you squint, it helps you to see if you are successfully making things um, in the right value or not. What you do when you squint is you, it's not so much like seeing through your eyelashes as it is kind of like blurring things out like if you weren't use wearing your glasses or something and um, so instead of looking for the hue or the chroma when you're squinting you're just looking back and forth between what you're painting and your and your um, your painting and your reference and you try and see if there are any big jumps in value that your reference has that your painting does not and then working from there or like subtly, subtleties. So for example, in working in this area, when I squint, a lot of like these edges on the flower end up blurring. So I wanna make sure that that's happening on my painting. Okay, so also I like to say that no matter what it looks like, just keep trying because um, oftentimes I'll look at my painting and I'll look at the reference and I'll just think, oh my gosh, it's not working or it has so long to go. And really it's just a matter of um, pushing through. A lot of my paintings go through that like ugly stage too, which is really horrible when it's a portrait or something as beautiful as a flower. But that's what happens because you're not tracing, you're not, you know, you're changing your drawing, you're exploring with color, you're not, you know, using a computer to like cheat or make it perfect. And, and it's in these, you know, 
changes that you'll grow as a painter and it's also like what gives your painting soul you know I think I think it's important that your paintings have soul and something that's easy I don't know it's not gonna have so much that being said I'm at the point now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking what what's not working I have my darks I have my lights I think I just haven't gotten light enough so I am going to take I'm going to try a couple different things I'm going to take one of my more favorite brushes this is a random brush I don't know if it'll work because it looks a little laid out but it's a Blick number no. one master stroke gold and tackle and round and I'm going to stick it into a big pile of white and just try and see if I can load it on there and really push some of these Leia's lights more. If I can push them more, I feel like this flower will look lighter. I feel like it's just not quite light enough. And I mean, there's a lot more light that's hitting back here and I haven't gotten there yet, so that's part of it too. But can only do so much so fast. Some people like to paint and finish um, petal by petal. And as I don't recommend jumping around too much, like I will go back, I tend to kind of establish a general feel, a general hierarchy of things, and then go in and figure out what's not working and then make that work. But it has to do with patience. I don't know that I have as much patience as maybe some other flower painters. I paint them, I think, more because they're so beautiful. Um, and I know that I can't, you know, reach in my paintings the same amount of beauty that they have in life. I think, you know, it's a different type of beauty. Funny, I can't even see this little guy anymore. I opened up so much. Well, let's keep working. I like to put in some of those intermediary pinks that I mixed. And I'm gonna take a new brush. Take, um, let's see. I guess I'll take. I got um, Ebony Splendor Bright Size 6. I wish it was a little bit smaller, but we'll see. We'll see what we've got here. I'm going to go for some of my lighter pinks that sort of come out of the darker areas. And sometimes when you get too light, you end up losing the chroma. So, you know, it looks pink on the palette, but by the time it gets up on your painting it doesn't look as pink so that means you just have to add in a little bit more more pink
Also, you can only do so much at once, right? So I'm laying in my lights. I'm ignoring some of my half tones. And now I'm gonna go and try and put some of those in. And I'm looking at how it gets a little more purple. purple and then it kind of shifts blue or a little bit grayer. It does that back here too. Oops. I had too much paint in there and it went too dark. So what I can try and do is lighten it, but if I end up getting too thick of paint without lighting it enough, lightening it enough, I'm gonna work. That looks all right. tough because you want to get rid of a lot of <clears throat> whoops too dark lines you want to get rid of a lot of lines but you still want to make it look like they're individual petals so it's a little tricky let's go back in with some lights keep going with some of these lights like in here on there. Here, I'm gonna lock on this instead so you can see these colors better.
this what I could see before I'm just gonna keep it it was very light it was hitting you know facing the light directly um, so I'll just put it back in There's a lot of grays happening in here because it's turned away from the light and then it gets lighter and lighter as it turns into the light. It's a little bit too blue. get some form on that petal a little bit more. I don't go for extreme detail on every single petal, but sometimes there are a few key ones that show great texture. And this is one of them. should be light but very thinly and that's tricky to do. So I can work up to it by putting it in and then sort of closing in on it and thinning it out.
So you can see this is really hard. It's a lot of different colors really close together, which is why I recommended that exercise where maybe you just start working from a photo. Maybe, you know, it's a little bit easier or maybe you start with colored pencil. be more fun, less messy. I just want to be aware of the color that's on your brush. Usually it gets darker and grayer as you go. That's the thing, when you're squinting, you want to squint at it, your painting and your flower as a whole, and make sure that the overall light effect is happening. So, for example, how it's like uh, lighter, then darker, then lighter, then darker, then lighter, darker, and light again. It's like this cup, this big cup. Sometimes that can get lost. And I also think that's how some people just paint their flowers. Rather than painting all of the petals, they paint that light effect in general, which is cool too. Ooh, that looks very blue.
Okay, and squinting, I can see I went way too dark over here. So let's lighten that up. a little messy, but it'll get there. Nope, that's more gonna go here. And then we're going to get more of a glow here. I'm almost done sort of setting the stage and then what I'll do is reevaluate and then add subtleties. So I'm almost done, you know, getting most of the colors down in a general state. Shadows where shadows go, lights where lights go. More blue or more purple or whatever. It's the hard part, really. It's important to just work at a pace that you're comfortable with. So maybe this, you know, I'm kind of going fast because I'm like, wow, this video is going to be three hours long if I don't paint a little quickly. So, I mean, you can imagine just really slowing down. Also, if my phone didn't overheat, I would be way further along by now. Hopefully that doesn't happen again.
quite blue, and I think that might be because it moved further away as the flower opened, which is cool. You can do that, and especially once we put in some of the green of the leaves, it'll really have a nice balance. So like I said, slow and steady. It's not looking great yet, but I have faith that it will. Just gotta stick with it. The light keeps changing um, with the sun and clouds and stuff. So that's what just happened there. looking at opportunities where I can get lighter, where I can get darker, you know, where I can add in some more of this peachy pink hue. I think I'll put these ones in green down there. Um, so, I just start laying in the colors. does is just help give definition and contrast and context.
some nice variety in the greens back here. And again, what I'm trying to do is set context first and then describe in detail later. So I'm getting the general color down here. Um, and the design here a little bit. And then I'll go back in and add more details later. But you can make the serrated edge pretty quickly. You know, it might not be perfect, but I can put in that red vein. Actually, it goes out a little more. This green can be much more yellow. I think what I'm going to do is spend a lot more time on um, putting in all of the greenery tomorrow or later, whenever I can get back to it.
putting in some of those darkest darks. Anyway, I could spend a lot of time planning out all of this. So, what I'd like to do is get myself away from this and start to try and focus on the flower again before this data runs out or the um, space on my phone runs out. Get real excited about everything else and then it's hard to pull back. Lots more blue down here. I don't know if the camera is picking up on that, but. And then this one. It's lighter and brighter and more yellow. 